Heroclix is a strategy and position-based game at its core, where I take my attack value against your defense value and roll 2d6 and hopefully match or exceed the difference between the two. But there's a whole other element I am not talking about that makes Heroclix unique. Powers and abilities. This is where the metagame is developed for modern competitive play. Metagame is loosely defined as what is considered to be the most optimal way to win or has the best performance at a specific task. So powers and abilities greatly determine a character's place in modern competitive play. So what is the meta of hero clicks going into worlds and beyond? Free attacks. Characters that can make more than one attack per action are highly valued right now. I know power erasers exist and we will get to that. But overall we are seeing an upswing in free attacks and this is how meta games are formed. The optimal way to play modern is to use characters that can make more attacks than you have actions per turn. Characters like Carnage Silver Surfer, World's Finest, Arachnite, and the infamous Spider-Man Prime. They all share something in common. They are lower points, hard to KO, and can make 2-3 to three attacks in one action. And thus we have formed a metagame. As far as attackers go, these are the best options at your disposal because of how much they can do for how much they cost. Being able to take out 20-40% to 40 of opponent's team with one piece is a great trade in the long game. Now, I know rotation just happened, so I don't want to talk too much about power racers like All Black the Necrosword and the Witches, but they do play a huge role right now in how these pieces function. Getting rid of defensive options like if a character relies on rolling out of attacks makes these figures work so much better. Relying on only your dice rolls to hit and deal damage increases your odds of winning when your opponent has no other options available to them. Even though Agatha, and more notably the Scarlet Witch, are great attackers on their own, they still benefit more when they're not doing the attacking and instead providing a path to victory by supporting more potent attackers. So that's it, right? Well, there's still another piece we aren't talking about right now. Merlin. Merlin's ability to limit your free actions is the sole reason why he's considered to be an S-tier figure. He completely nullifies your team's free actions, and makes it so you have to double and triple check your positioning and what powers you use. It's also worth noting that Outwit and Perplex, two of the best powers in the game, are considered free actions. With this power also, Merlin also limits your free attacks because those are considered free actions. And with that, we have created the Anti-Meta. Anti-Meta characters like Merlin will rise more and more as we see a dominance in the current meta state of the game, making the most optimal way of playing a hindrance. If we see a full shift towards the anti-meta teams, it comes full circle and becomes a new meta and the cycle will continue. We also have to consider the Black Lantern Core, which is a new kind of architect coming in the DC Notorious Mega Set. This archetype is poised to see a lot of play for the future of Heroclix, so we'll have to see how it goes. But that's it for this video. Hopefully this helps you understand how metagames are formed or gave you a little more insight on how the game of Heroclix is played at a competitive level. So thank you for watching, please like this video and subscribe for more Heroclix content. And we'll see you next time, where we talk about all things Heroclix.